Hey everybody, how's it going? After popping up that winter cycling video a few days ago, it kind of dawned on me that one of my favorite things to do in the winter is to ride slippery descents, but to ride them safely and effectively. So I thought I'd share my take on how to do that with you because I think one of the things that puts people off riding outside in a British winter, where we don't really have that much ice, is that the roads are slippery, they are dodgy, but by paying attention to what I'm about to show you, it makes it that much more enjoyable. And also, Mike is a bit of a star at riding in the wet as well. So we're going to go find a nice, grotty, slippery descent, and we'll see you there. First things first, riding slippery descents, it's always going to help if your tyres aren't too hard. In the winter, I probably have 10 to 20 psi less than I would in the summer. So I've got a 25mm tyre on the front. It's got around 65 psi in it, and for a 28 on the rear, I've probably got closer to 60. So they both feel roughly the same to squeeze. Obviously volume accounts for a little bit of pressure. Once we've got that out of the way, one of the most crucial things to think about is your position on the bike and being really relaxed. So we're gonna come into a little right and then a left. I'll stick the camera on the side of the road so you can see exactly what I'm doing. You wanna keep your weight over the top of the tires. You wanna keep your weight on your feet and your hands rather than on your saddle. So the weight is as low as possible, as close to the tires as possible. Try and imagine drawing a straight line down through your tire. That's kind of where you want the weight to be on your bike. A lot of the time you see people leaning off to one side a little bit. And all that's gonna do, move the weight away from those tires, increase the likelihood of them sliding away from you. Another thing that's really important to remember is don't panic brake. If you're going a little bit too fast, you're almost always gonna be safer riding into the hedge than you would be grabbing a handful of brake and ending up on the floor. Which brings me on to my next point. I've mentioned it before in videos always scanning for some sort of escape route is guaranteed to help you stay safe on your bike. This takes time, but the more you practice it, the more you get used to processing that sort of information, the safer you will be on your bike. You'll notice that I seem to do quite a weird thing with my head, which is almost as if I'm peering around the corner. It doesn't really afford me much visibility. It's kind of a habit that I've gotten into, and it makes me feel like I'm looking further around the corner than I really am. In reality, it probably doesn't help that much, but it just helps me feel ready and aware of anything that might be around the corner. Where we live in Cornwall, loads of horses, people out walking with their kids, their dogs, that sort of thing. And you just need to be on it all the time, track the part around the corner of a blind bend, that sort of thing. Anything that gives you even just a quarter of a second extra's notice, it's gonna really help keep you safe on the road. So in the winter, if it's been dry for a long period of time, it's likely that you won't have any trouble on the descent whatsoever. If it's just rained for the first time in a few weeks, which actually on the whole, is quite unlikely. It's normally quite wet in the winter then you've got so many things to watch out for. So if it's just rained, all of the composting leaves are gonna to start to wash out into the road, which is gonna leave that nice greasy oily film, which is gonna increase your chance of slipping. Any oil on the road, any diesel, any other dirt, dung, that sort of thing, manure, and white lines. These are all things you need to watch out for, but also the changes in the road surface as well. So the road is gonna look quite different in the winter to what it is in the summer. Often the roads aren't as well maintained, meaning that you're gonna to have to look out for bumps but because of the daylight and the visibility, it's often gonna be harder to spot them as well. If you're riding underneath trees and you've got loads of shadows and stuff, it's just gonna make that even more difficult. But by thinking ahead, planning ahead, not going too fast, because crucially, there are no prizes for crashing when training, then you will be able to tackle all of these things with ease, enjoy your ride, feeling really relaxed and chilled out. When it comes to braking, always a huge fan of using the front brake mainly, that's just physics, all the weights on the front, but use the back brake to help you sort of modulate that speed or the scrubbing of that speed as you're coming into the corner. You wanna make sure all your braking is done before you get into the corner, especially when surfaces are slippery because it's just gonna increase your chance of the wheel locking up, sliding out from underneath you. If I was to choose which wheel I'd prefer to have washing out, which sometimes is a choice, I'd always prefer to land on my backside, partly because mine's big and padded, but also the idea of my front wheel washing out from underneath me, ending up on my chin, that just doesn't appeal. Whilst that's not something you're ever gonna to expect to want to have to consider, it is a consideration at times. Maybe it's an icy day, maybe it's just a real slippery day. You're a little bit out of control because you've gone too fast around the corner. Then I'd just choose to grab a handful of back brake, hope that the bike washes out from underneath me if I was really having to avoid something that was gonna be much more serious. Again, very unlikely. Essentially, it all just comes down to relaxing on the bike, following those few little tips, watching out for the road surface, analyzing the road like you would in the dry, but just being aware that things are different in the wet. If it's just rained heavily, it's gonna be gravel on the road as well, something I didn't mention before. There's just a lot to look out for, but it doesn't mean you have to stress, doesn't mean it's not enjoyable. Relax on the bike, and you'll enjoy it that much more. Hopefully you found this useful, and I'll see you again in another video soon. 
I love reading all your comments. I love the thumbs up and I love it when you subscribe. So please keep doing that as well. Cheers from us.